this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is Corsair's Dominator Platinum RGB RAM. This is DDR4 RAM and a 32GB kit with four 8GB sticks of 3600MHz. Now this is an unboxing video and we're showing off the RAM and showing it up close, but I'm also going to show you how to activate XMP settings within your BIOS to get the best speed out of it. And you need to do that to be able to get the 3600 megahertz. And it's worth noting that isn't the fastest kit you can get. You can actually get up to 4800 out of this with it overclocked and the maximum. Those are obviously more expensive. This kit is pretty expensive on its own, but it is wonderful. And as you'll see, it's very good looking. Now, this Dominator RAM is highly thought of, and it also has Corsair's Capilix LEDs in it, which means it has 12 individually addressable LEDs on top that you can adjust within Corsair's IQ software. And that allows you to obviously customize it to fit with the lighting of your case, whether that's your fans, rad, pump, CPU pump, and all that other stuff. And obviously if you have keyboard and mice and stuff like that as well, it looks wonderful. It really looks like a very premium quality RAM though, as you'll see coming out of the box. The white version that I've seen here, you can also get it in black, but you can see just how detailed and premium looking these sticks are with superior aluminium craftsmanship. And they put a lot of effort into making it look fantastic, but obviously it's underneath that counts in terms of your RAM and these sticks obviously are very good quality from Corsair and overclockable, capable, and just give you that sheer amount of power. Now I've been using Corsair's Vengeance RAM in my previous build, and for this one I'm using Dominator because it's a newer kit and I just wanted to be able to show off what it looks like. And you should see a really clean design to it, really nice, looks fantastic in white. And when it's plugged in, as you saw at the beginning, when the RGB LEDs are lit up, you can see that really nicely too. You also note there is some of that on the sides here and you can see it between the top of the housing. So you do get some RGB light bleed there, but you won't notice that terrible when it's in the case and running. You can't really see that a great deal. What more becomes the focus is the top, the very top of it with the squares on top. Installation process is obviously fairly straightforward. Here this is the MSI Z490 ACE motherboard for Intel setup. It has four slots, so perfect for all this kit, which you can just install all of the RAM in. Obviously it's a dual channel motherboard, so you could just get two sticks and have 16. I actually am contemplating upgrading to 64 gigs because I have 64 gigs of my current machine and video editing and other things that I do quite taxing on the old RAM front. So that might be an option in the near future. I might get another Dominator kit and upgrade it. However, 32 is obviously more than enough for most people's needs and 3600 megahertz is obviously very fast as well. It is fairly important that you activate the XMP setup though and I'm gonna show you why a bit later on because as default, it won't actually be 3600 megahertz when you plug it in. If you just plug it in, turn on your PC and start using it, you'll find that you don't have that speed. So you're not making the most of what you've paid for, essentially. So it's very important that you go into the BIOS and make sure you have those settings set up. Most modern motherboards, uh, Intel motherboards, will certainly have XMP settings in them. Basically, that allows you to make the most of those faster speeds. And then obviously you can dive into overclocking settings, but these aren't overclocking settings to, as standard. You're just setting it up and activating to get the most out of them, basically turning on to boost them. And you'll see how to test that and how to change it a bit later on. But here the installation process, dead simple, you're basically just plugging them in. Now, normally if you're installing RAM, if you've not done it before, you need to make sure you get it in the right slot. So obviously you have enough RAM here to fit in all four slots. If you only had two sticks, you'd need to look at your motherboard and work out which ones you need to plug in first, because usually you have to plug them in in a certain order. So it might be slot A1 and slot A2, for example, and ignoring the B slots, but it's really going to vary depending on your motherboard. You'll usually find instructions in the manual on which ones to plug in, and if you don't plug them in correctly, then they won't be recognized and you will run into issues. Obviously, filling up all the slots means you don't have a problem anyway. Here you can see them installed along with the WD Black SN750 and the Intel Core i7 10700K that I have in place at the moment and from the side as you can see they look magnificent but what you will note immediately as I said is that for the most part most of the side lighting won't be visible from the case you'll only really see 
one side of one stick of RAM or the other side, depending on where you have it on your desk. But the top is where the action is. And you can see it here. So you can see some of the light bleed from one of the sticks, as I said, and you get a lot of that RGB on top. And it is individually addressable. So each of those can be changed and you can see them reacting to the other things in the case. So the pump head and the fans, and they all just come in line with those. But you can customize the RAM on its own. So you could have that in a different color and you can set up each of the individual squares on the top of the Dominator RAM to be a different color too. Obviously this doesn't make any difference to the speed of it or your performance, but it does look good. And it rounds off a very premium looking bit of kit anyway, because these are fantastic. And as you saw, if you're not into having RGB lighting, you can turn it off or you could just set it to a single color. I really like having mine on blue, for example. It looks really good and blue keeps it running cool. It doesn't really. Now in Windows, there's a bit of software you can get from MSI and just generally called CPU Z and that allows you to then look and check up on the various settings. Excuse the quality here, this was captured with the camera rather than the screen capture. What you can see here is that the RAM frequency is 1066 megahertz and that's what it's running at when you just boot into Windows initially and that's how it starts off. Obviously that is not 3600 megahertz so that's not ideal, it's not running as it should be. So. 1067 so we need to go in to the BIOS in order to sort this out so rebooting hitting that delete key and going to the BIOS now you can see in MSI's BIOS that it's set and it's running at 2133 megahertz which again isn't correct what you need to bear in mind with these things is that, that speed is actually in a dual channel setup so what you saw with the 1066 is one stick is 1066, two is 2133. But what we're trying to achieve is obviously 3600 megahertz. So now if you go in, you'll notice there's an XMP profile there, which is easy access, but it might be a bit different in your BIOS setup. So you need to go into the settings and I'm just going to show you how to do that on here as a demonstration purposes. So we're looking for overclocking, but don't panic because we're not overclocking. It's usually a simple process. You basically need to find the RAM settings and you'll see extreme memory profile. And there's usually just an ena enable and disable button. Enabling that should be enough. So just clicking on enable there and then just restart your machine. You see immediately it recognizes it's DDR4 3600 megahertz and it's set it there automatically. You'll note further down there are options where you can adjust it manually and set the timings and the speed yourself. However, you will find for the most part, usually if you're just doing this sort of basic thing and you're not worrying about overclocking, you can just enable it and then set automatically. If you look now in the top left corner, you'll see suddenly the DDR speed is now at 3600 megahertz as it should be and that's just done with it being automatic but you can go in and change the settings and i'm going to sh quickly show you how to do that although i didn't need to on this and you might not need to either so you can see there are options for load memory presets if you click on the dram frequency options you'll see there are a number of them listed obviously for our ram we're looking for ddr4 3600 and this is another way you could do it. You can see it there. So there, now we've manually set what the frequency is rather than automatically doing it. And that allows you to tweak it. And obviously there are other options. I, in this case, use auto because you don't need to do it. Now, when you go back into Windows, you run CPU Z again, you'll see the difference. Now we're up to 1800 megahertz. That still doesn't sound like 3600, but don't forget this is for a single stick. Actually, when you put that together, 1800 times 2 is obviously 3600. So you are getting the correct speed there and it is running as it should be. Hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you found it useful, interesting, hilarious, or all of the above. Be sure to check out the description for other information you might find interesting, and subscribe and watch these other videos as well that I think might be useful to you. And have a great life.